put up a billboard in Fort Worth, Texas, of him and his dog and his Cadillac just self-promoting himself. Right. Like, so he's a, he's a guy that's just trying to get publicity. Right. And I met with him. He doesn't have money. You know, he's like, it's a big, he, you know, he, he, he doesn't have money. You know, he makes it out like he's this rich guy. He's not this rich guy. And the lawyers are kind of in the same boat. So I wanted to talk to you guys about just why are they doing this? Like, what do they really know? Because from what I can see, they're basically trying to blame you because of Tiger King. Because they're basically, they're, everything that they know really is coming from what they saw in Tiger King, which is so ridiculous. You know, it, um, it's not like they really have any information. So anyway, so that was one thing. If have you, you want to see, have you seen the text messages that they claim? The Daily Mail just posted this story a couple of days ago. Bombshell revelations. These are the. These are the messages that's going to get Joe uh, acquitted. And it's it's where he was texting me. It's like th they believe what is, you know, he lies every time he opens his mouth. And he lied in his text messages, too, when he said Alan, Alan stole the pizza phone. Did you see that? You know, I kind of did from peripherally. I saw it, but I, I, can, I know enough just because I've followed these guys that they're basically desperate and they're trying to get publicity. And like I said, you know, none of it's going to go anywhere, right? Because yeah. the truth is, you know, if you talk to Matt Bryant, if you talk to you, if you talk to anyone that really knows, it, you know, they had a, Matt Bryant will tell you that they, you know, they had such a strong case against Joe. And anyway, the whole thing to me is just totally ridiculous. So anyway, so we don't we don't need to get into the details now. Right. But I think I think the places that you guys could speak about is, you know, what is the crazy free Joe people and, and what what are they really after, which I think we all know the answer to. And then two, you know, what do you guys you know, what are you planning now and sort of, you know, I, I, you know, to the degree that you want to sort of correct our mistakes, which I'm happy to do. Um and let me just see what else. And um, and how our life has uh, changed, you know. I, I think that would be very interesting because, you know, it's you may not believe it, but we can't go out in public. We'll, we'll take you to Dallas if you want to go, and we go to these clubs. And it's fucking insane. You'd think that we were some kind of celebrities. And, and you know, I mean, that means we, we have Floyd Mayweather's bodyguards they're our security team now, and if we don't take them, watch what happens. I mean, it's and it's you know it's it's cool to a degree, but it's it's scary too. You know that, that these strangers come up, they know your name, they know where you live. You know, it's it's just weird, and um, you know it, it, I think it would be interesting to show what happened. You know, the 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 impact that Tiger King had on on people's lives. Who, who yeah. you know introduced in episode four? Uh, and, you know, it's well, just, I think I think Jeff, it would be important for you and Lauren to speak to that, and also to speak to the fact that, and I think this is really important. And, and this, like I said, in the outset of this conversation, I got wrong for sure, and I knew it was wrong. Is that you know you you know and Lauren. Um, you know, at, 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 as best you could at some point, I believe, you know, try to help with Matt Bryant and James Garrison, you know, and, you know, at some point you had to kind of make a decision. And I think it's really important for people to understand that Joe asked countless people to, you know, ask them, you know, whether it was Mark Thompson, whether it was, you know, you know, probably John Finley. Hundreds you know, of people. To, to take out peril. And, and it's important that people understand that regardless of your involvement in any way, shape, or form, Joe was trying to take out Carol. He was, you know, and so and that's important to speak to. Um, if you want to speak to that, I'm not, listen, I'm really at this point, there's nothing, I'm not trying to drag you into the Joe thing or any of that stuff. I just thought it would be interesting for people to know what you just said, what happened to you after Tiger King, and what you guys plan to do, and I'm, I'm really, like I said, I, I can go and film you guys or not, it, it doesn't really matter, I, I'd like to do it, but we're far enough down the road, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, but I think it would be a missed opportunity for you guys, and, and then, 
you know, the, the last thing, I mean, there's, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but the last thing would be, um, you know, if, if anyone in your orbit wants to say something, you know, obviously I would, I would definitely want to interview them. So say, I don't know where Eric Gatto is in this story now. I don't know where Eric Cowie is. I don't know. You know, if there's anyone else in your orbit that would be, you know, worthwhile speaking to, that would be interesting for me. Um, you know, Cowie's here. We got Cowie's got a new set of teeth. Um, he's. I heard that. He <laughs> he hasn't touched alcohol in in months. Um, I've oh, and by the way. I, I did buy Eric Howie one bottle of alcohol, and you're right, when you texted me that time. I, after the trial, he did want a bottle of vodka, and I did go to a liquor store to buy it for him. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't, to get a good, it wasn't to get a good interview. It was really more, he was shaking like a leaf. But anyway, yeah. um, let me see. So, yeah, you know, and then what I would do is, I this is what I prefer to do, rather than going to jail. People, what I prefer to do is just meet you guys break and I, I don't really want to talk about it over the phone but if you're not happy you don't have to do it and we uh, but I re- and by the way I'm not recording this phone call yeah me either uh, but, you know I'm just I'm just telling you you know I'm not recording this call I'm calling you in good faith and I would just meet you you guys and I would just you know I would break, work it out with you whatever kind of arrangement in terms of Financial. You know, but you, what you yeah. don't what you don't know, and I don't know if you even care at this point. But after all this happened, I get a phone call from you know I had that reality show deal with the History Channel in 2015, and the producer of that felt so bad that the History Channel shelved that project that he he used to just keep up with me all the time, and he called me when we were in. When, when I moved out to um, Colorado and I had just met Joe and I can't even remember, I, I don't even, the feds don't, the feds don't even know about this visit, but Joe wanted to do a reality show and I had just met him and I, I told my, my buddy, the producer from Firecracker about it and he says, you know, he says, this sounds like a really interesting concept. So he came out there with all of his film crew and filmed me and Joe for like three days. And uh, you know, all through the mansion and Travis and Joe being interviewed about how much he hates Carol Baskin and, and the animal industry. And then he, he took all the film of us skydiving. And then when he got back to um, Arizona, Joe sent him two hard drives full of footage. So, I'm laying in bed one night about, huh, how long ago? Five months ago? And, and I remembered, and, and my son had just moved here. My son Taylor moved here from Colorado. And he asked me, what about all the footage that Scott had? And I said, fuck, I wonder if he still has it. So I called Scott, and he says, yeah. He says, I still got that terabyte full of, full of Joe Exotic stuff. So, it's, I mean, it's hour after hour after hour of footage that technically belongs to Scott, but Scott said to do do with it what I want. And Walter Mosley, our attorney, and that and that Gino, that I don't I've never met Gino, but he's some he's a producer that has got 250 credits on on Netflix or 300 maybe I don't even know. And, he did on IMD. Yeah, and he um, they took that footage and they. They tell me that they just spent fifty thousand dollars to have it all edited, and I said, "Well, you didn't ask me if you could take my footage and edit it." And I said, "So I demanded it back today. I haven't heard what what the reply has been because Walter Mosley's Walter Mosley's dad is sick or some shit. So they're using that as an excuse for not returning my phone call. But you know, it's my footage, and I know that Scott has." A backup because he uploaded it to um, Dropbox for them to get it. So he, you know, he, Scott still has the original. But what, could we buy the footage from him? Well, that's what I'm. That's what I'm getting at. Let me ask you, Jeff. Let me ask you something. Do you still have the 
the, the trailer or whatever you did when you tried to, when you tried to make that um, the liquidation show or no you don't have that still do you the trailer yeah mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah actually we do is that is that the same production company firecracker well it was yeah it started out as firecracker and then it changed to well first it was left field productions which was um, Pawn Stars producers and then right. they handed it off to um, a guy named um, um, Dan Schnook and Dan was Malachi in the Children of the Corn and he, he now he, he does quite a few really big shows created, I guess he created Bar Rescue um, yeah he created Bar Rescue my son's in the back seat tell me he created Bar Rescue um, I don't just you can look him up I Dan Snook and then Dan Snook is the one who came out to do the reality t the, the TV show in in South Carolina they had a deal they had a, they had they had the funding and the deal up front with uh, in the bag with History Channel so they they came out and I've got episodes I got three episodes um, and um, you can watch them there. I should have showed them to you They're on my computer. It was really good. Well, could I? Well, my question is like back to sort of compensation for you guys. I wonder if I like if I you know it's always easier if you if I can buy something from you as part of the deal. Like if right. I could buy that from you. And right. So I wonder if you guys could try to find any of that stuff. It might be interesting to look at with you or try to see. I've got that, that and, and I can and I can sell Scott's footage, and mm -hmm. you know Walter and and Gino kind of. Kind of, they just kind of took over. To that, they wanted. What are they trying to do with? What are they trying to do with that footage now? They claim that they were, they claimed that they're going to sell it to some production company to do some Joe uh -huh. Exotic show, and and it's not footage that we've already seen no, out there in the world. Nope, nobody's seen it. I haven't even seen the it. Pro the problem is that you know they have to do it soon because right now, like you know, like eventually people get burned out on stuff, right? Yeah. Like. like yeah. Discovery ID did episodes on Joe and Carol, and now Dateline. You know, whatever this Dateline, and I don't know if there's going to be that many more. Um, you know, maybe there's a few more, but I would just think if they're smart, they would try to you know Cash offer it to in, us. Yeah. Or, that's what, that's what yeah. I asked him. I said, "You guys, I said, you guys think this footage is like wine that it gets better with age? It doesn't. It, it loses uh, appeal. Uh, it loses. It yeah, loses people value. go on to the next thing, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah, but well, okay, so." Let me do this. I guess there's probably a lot of things to talk about. One of them also is the the rights to the Joe Exotic name or whatever the name is. We or Tiger King. We can we can talk about that too. Yeah. I have a little bit of insight onto that. Um, but I think the maybe the best thing to do is you just tell me when the best time is, and we can meet at the Wind Star. We can meet wherever you want to meet, um, and we can work something out and. You know, like, look, I, you know, I, I, you don't have to say anything you don't want to say. And, and I'm, it would just be me, and I'd bring, you know, same as always. Right. And I think if we just talked about the beats I just mentioned, the themes I just mentioned, like, what are you guys up to? What are you doing? And maybe we can help in a cool way through this next, I don't know how many episodes we're going to be able to pull off because we weren't able to, you know, we didn't have that much time and COVID made it difficult, but but we can promote whatever it is you're doing. At least a lot of people see it. You know that much. Um, and then try to get some of the things corrected about what happened to you guys. Because one thing, like I said, like I'll say it a hundred times. I know Jeff and Lauren. I know that Tiger King didn't portray you fairly. And you can quote that. And I know that um, Joe, you know, did what he did, regardless of you guys. Totally, I know that. So anyone that says, and you know, all those people out there that says, that I'm Joe's a rat, I'm out. a snitch, yeah. Well, yeah, James Gerritsen too. James is funny though. He just, you know, James will do anything to make a buck, right? right. He'll do anything. He'll turn on a dime, no matter what it is. So he's sort of like, you never know what James was going to say because James, you know, he's just he's James. But right. um, but you guys, like I, I know. You know, and I, I like I, t I told you through the process, you know, Joe came off as this kind of anti-hero, like he's sort of the Robin Hood or something. He's not the Robin Hood. You know, I know that about Joe. I know Joe, you know, it's parts of Joe's personality I like, and he's so crazy and kind of flamboyant. And there's parts of him I really like, but I do know that Joe did a lot of bad shit, and he would have tried to kill Carol. And I also know, by the way, because I spoke to J.C. Hardpence, 
one of Joe's old boyfriends right. in prison. JC told me, you know, and you can believe it or you don't have to, but it, it was fairly believable. He told me when John Finley was cheating on Joe with Amber, with, um, with the, Amber. Amber, yeah, with Amber, exactly. And when they were cheating on each other, Joe freaked out and John and Joe were fighting constantly and Sheriff Rhodes was called to come in and intervene for so many domestic disputes between John and Joe. And J.C. Harpin says, says that Joe reached out to J.C. asking J.C. if he would take out John at a certain point, basically come and kill John. And so Joe, you know, you can believe that or not, but I, I find it thoroughly believable that Joe you know, tried maybe to take out John at one point because of that whole situation. And then, you know, obviously asked, you know, countless people to do the same to Carol. Um, so there's a pattern with Joe kind of being, you know. Violent, yeah, ready to kill people for, yeah. Well, whatever, you know, just kind of just being, yeah. So I think there's a pattern there. So there's, no one's going to convince me otherwise that Joe didn't try to, you know, take out Carol in some way or form. You know, he, he bit the bait, and, and that's his problem. That's not your problem. Right. Um, so, so I'm convinced of that, and I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I feel bad that you guys kind of got sucked into this narrative that you, you somehow set up Joe, and, and that would be good to get corrected, because I don't believe that for a second. Um, you know, and I think that, um, yeah, so that, I think, is important. I think what happened to you guys afterwards, and then maybe if there's somehow a way to promote what you guys are up to, those three things definitely come to mind as things that would be important to maybe talk about. You um, want to see it in New Park? But yeah, if you want to show it to me, sure. Um, and But, you know, I don't want to pressure you guys. I'm, I'm like, at this point, you know, I never thought in a million years I would be in this situation doing more of this stuff. I thought it was over with, you know, I was burnt out on it already, and now I'm in it again. Um, when, when would this air, do you know? You know... I think, like, the way it works, it's kind of like last year. It's interesting. The timing is really similar. We have to lock picture. Just the way it works is we probably have to lock picture sometime in November. Don't you lock you by know, the just, episode, though? No, we would lock everything. And then what would happen is, I mean, we would lock maybe by the episode. We, but we would have to lock everything by the, you know, sometime in November. Because then what happens is you basically have to take all the episodes color correct them do the music do the sound and then netflix puts them into like 120 languages and that takes time right. to do all that stuff so that takes a couple months and i my guess would be it would air be really similar to last time you know the timing is probably going to end up airing at the end of march or you know somewhere in there okay yeah you know, i'm guessing man i'm guessing right, right. Well, maybe early march if we're lucky but it would probably be around the same time that the last one aired just worked out that way you know well then what happened Uh, with the footage that you were doing like when you showed up at our house after joe got um convicted convicted would that be part of this too you know i never used that footage of anybody after joe you know we went back we filmed the sentencing and then we went to to the, the park interviewed you guys i interviewed I think I interviewed Rinky, Josh Dahl, because I think they were there. I'm trying to remember right now. And it, we never put it in because it was too similar to the uh, the trial stuff, like the stuff with, uh, what's her name? Um, you know, the, the um, district attorney, um, what was her name? Anyway, it was too similar. So I don't know if we'll end up using that or not, that stuff. Why, why do you ask? It's funny. Oh, ask no, I'm just asking because we just, I just didn't see it in the... Just because it showed empathy kind of for Joe, you know, that... The, no, you know, that's a good point. It, 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 I forget what, I forget, I, you know, it's funny you say that. I do think that in the end, we should probably, I, I think it would be good to show empathy for Joe and to have people like yourself, you know, I think it would be good for Joe too and for everyone involved to know, to basically have something that says, some, you know, like if, if that's what you guys said, I think it would be good to include that because I think it's important to say, Basically, Joe did a lot of bad stuff, and, you know, he should be doing some time, but he shouldn't be doing a life sentence, you know? And well, I think you know what they did? Here, here, here's what's kind of fucked up between me and you and whoever's in my car. Is <laughs> I, sat, I sat 50 feet from where I'm sitting right now with Matt Bryant, 
and Tim Stark. And we discussed this whole Endangered Species Act and how captive bred and captive held animals are not covered by the Endangered Species Act. He says point blank, they're not. He says if yeah. if somebody says that they've got a you know a, a tiger that's being mistreated, Federal Fish and Wildlife does not respond to that call because that's a captive held animal. We called we called the Department of Interior and asked them the same thing. And I've got the recording of the woman saying no, the Endangered Species Act does not protect captive you know like circus animals. She says because they're not they don't propagate the species and and the endangered species act was designed to propagate the species in, in the wildlife so so but 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 then matt matt stood behind the conviction of the killing of the endangered species in joe's case so and i asked him i even asked matt i said why i said if if the endangered species act doesn't cover you know protected animals and he says, well, he says, I had to, he says, we wanted, in so many words, he says, we wanted a conviction. And the fact that we had him so blatantly not using a vet to, to but, kill but, those but animals. Good job. job, Mike. Without even getting into the weeds on this, I would just tell you this. And I think you know this. You guys know this. Lauren, you know this. If you look at every single, any person around the United States, you know, over the last 20 years that have been um, convicted or, or have been charged with ESA, Endangered Species Act violations, or Lacey Act, either one of those violations, or even USDA, but I think for sure, yes, Endangered Species Act. Nobody, I know one guy that, because it was, he, he was a repeat offender, this guy, Ansem Wong, he did seven years or six years. I think he got out a little bit early, but he got arrested. They had a big sting. He, he was extradited out of Mexico City. This is a while ago. But other than that guy, no one does a lot of time. I, I've been in, I've been charged with, with Endangered Species Act violation right. myself twice, twice, Lacey Act, actually. And I remember, like, you know, this guy in New York had a hard on for me and I, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I paid a little civil penalty. And the truth is, that it's so easy to make a mistake and you know like it's and the laws are so stupid in, in the sense that you know you're allowed to sell within the state but you right. can't go across state lines it's right. like what, what what would possibly why would there be you know why would you be allowed to, be allowed to sell, sell within the state of california which is a huge state 40 million people but you can't sell it to nevada right, right. like right. none of it makes any sense no one's usually charged you know, like people don't do a lot of time usually for this kind of stuff. Joe did a lot of time. I don't care what anyone says, because of the two murder for hire charges. Yeah. Had had he not done that, the, the judge they couldn't have gotten him. Every, yeah. yeah, everyone would have said, okay, you did some stupid shit. You know, maybe he does twelve months, or maybe they give him two years, but he gets out after after you know does twelve months or something. But most people pay a civil fine for that stuff. And so, you know, yeah, they're getting stricter, you know, than they did 10, 20 years ago. But let, let's be honest. Joe got wrapped up in the murder for hire stuff with Carol. And that's why he's doing the time that he's doing. And even though technically it says he's doing, you know, five years for each, you know, count of the Endangered Species Act, the Lacey Act, or whatever other shit he's... But really, it's like O.J. Simpson said, O.J., second time he got busted, you know, should have done... You know, six a year, months, right, 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 or a year. But they put him away because they want they had a they wanted to put him away, and it was the same with Joe. It and it really boils down to the murder for hire charge. And even though it looks like it's about all the cats and everything, you know, that's just not the case. And so, you know, that's just you know, that's just that anyone can tell you that. Yeah. You know. So. Well, so, you yeah, know, I mean, here, here's what else I'd like to discuss is I'd like to discuss. How for for the last three and a half years, all my USDA inspections were perfect. I had the same crew and staff as I as I have today. And post Tiger King, they come into my facility not only with my normal inspector, but with the inspector that used to hate Joe, Debbie Cunningham. No, but listen, but the, the Tiger King, the bad news is it put a target on you. It put a target on Tim, or the more of a target on Tim. Tim already had a target right. on, but then it, 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 so that you know, like you know, to be honest, 
you guys all suddenly became, you know, like, you know, on everybody's radar. Right. You guys were like, you know, you, you know, everyone started looking. Carol is the weird, you know, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen with Carol. But, um, yeah, I mean, listen, that's, you know, that's a bummer that that was part of the, the, the you know, the but, byproduct. But you, of but, you know what, but you know what we have, which I'll show you, is the last day, they, they did three inspections in a month. And on the final and third inspection, it was 30 days before we had to be off. It was like September 1st, I think. And we had to be off the property by September 30th or October 1st. So all of a sudden, I get a phone call. You know, I get the radio. USDA's here again. I said, are you fucking kidding me? So I go up there, and, and Debbie, and, Debbie and, and, and Bonnie Boone and some other guy are there along with the sheriff, Sheriff Mullet. And I said, so what is this now about? And they said, well, I said, we're going to do another inspection. I said, I'll tell you what. I said, I knew you, you cannot transfer a license from one zoo to another. I knew that my license would expire October 1st. I was concerned on our techniques for moving the animals might not be in compliance with the USDA regulations. Like we're going to start cutting, cutting down barriers without, you know, with, with, we had to get big cages out and, yeah, so, yeah, for sure. For so sure. I was gonna I was gonna forfeit my license 15 days prior, because forfeiting your license was is kind of redundant because it expired the day I left that park. It would have it would have been no good anyway. So right. when she showed up that day, we stood out front and and I asked her about the USDA report, the 21 right. day suspension, and all the things. Everything in there, Eric, was Joe. It was the lemurs that Joe did. It was everything. Every violation was on his license. In, From in, 10 in years animals. ago. It was a possum. But, and but Jeff, so the I got, problem was that article that came out by that guy, Jerry Mitchell, that had to do with that woman, Michelle Johnson, or whatever her name is. Oh, yeah, yeah that, that That woman had a, like, and she's, by the way, that shit crazy, but that woman was working with that guy, Jerry Mitchell, who was working on the Don Lewis thing, and then he did a favor to her or something and put out that article about, you know, whatever. You know, listen, look. But but we, have, but we have them on recording. Lauren recorded it, and she didn't have her phone up to work. You know, she, she was kind of doing it covertly. And I asked Debbie, I said, why did you say this in the inspection? She says, Jeff, I didn't say that. I said, why did you say this? She said, Jeff, I didn't say that. And I said, this looks more like a PETA that Peter wrote this and she said she says Jeff I have bills to pay and I said yeah. what she says I have bills to pay so you know it's we're I'm going after the USDA fuck them I'm, I'm gonna sue them and but the, you know listen you know it's funny you were talking about this because I at one time I um, knew this the mayor of Houston and I remember it's another story this guy Bill White and I remember sitting at a bar with him and in Houston, Texas, and he, he started explaining to me that they want to get someone, and I just know this anyway from a nightclub guy that I used to be really close with, owned this club in New York called The Limelight, and, and Giuliani wanted to get this guy. His name, right. his name's, uh, his, his name is uh, Peter um, like Gation. Anyway, and Peter Gation owned this big nightclub in New York called uh, called The Limelight, he, and Peter looked like a bad guy because he had a missing eyes so he right. wore an eye pack right so he looked like kind of like a pirate right. anyway they wanted him so badly and and they tried every fucking way to target him right ultimately they got him for tax evasion and they sent him back to canada i mean we're still friends and this guy bill white texas told me the same thing in houston the problem is that you guys became a target and they wanted a piece of you and it's just like the, the truth is this jeff and you know this any fucking zoo in the United States, if if, if, if if any zoo, AZA zoo, was a target, you could go into any AZA zoo. If they wanted someone to go in and infiltrate the Oklahoma City Zoo, right? Yep. And you went in there for a week and spent time filming, you know, behind the scenes, in the quarantine rooms, you know, anywhere in that zoo, you would end up coming back with something on some animal that wasn't eating well, that was thin, some animal that had an abscess, some animal that had a tumor, some animal that was dying. Like, no zoo in this country doesn't have some shit going on, because right. it's just, you have, so much, you have this many animals. So the other thing I would just say to you is, yeah, maybe they, those were jo Joe's animals. I believe that. But also, when they want to look at you with a magnifying glass, 
you know, I, it, it, the same with me, with keeping turtles, whatever. They're going to find something. If they want to go in and look that hard, there's always, you know, every zoo in the country has animals that die. Right. Every zoo in the country makes mistakes, right? And so, you know, you the problem is, in the end of the day, they put you on their radar. There was some a series of articles. Tiger King probably didn't help. And then there was, you know, that fucking woman and... And, you know, like, people wanted to get publicity and you, at, at your expense. And, you know, the rest is history. So, listen, I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to go in. That's why if you want to show me Packerville, it's fine. If you don't, it's fine. If you want to show me, you know, listen, you can do, and I'm totally, I get it, I, and it totally makes sense. Do what Doc Ansel does. Like, he never shows anyone the cages, right? He just shows, I'm not trying to go in and, you know, tear you apart. I'm actually, at this point... I'd like to get the Joe story right. I'd like to get figure out what you guys want to say about what you guys are going to do. I'd like to, you know, if, if, if have you talk about whatever you want to talk about in terms of how it impacted you guys, and and how maybe you did you did become a target unfairly, you know, if you want to talk about that. But I'm not looking to go in and do anything that you don't want me to do. You know, that's what I would say to you guys, and that's why honestly I kind of backed off. I was kind of like, you know what, you know, if we interview you cool if we don't it's okay um you know i think you got a big hole in that story if you don't if you don't wrap it up with us you know i personally so, so, so let's do this because i got rob but i would say this listen one i really appreciate you talking with me and two i if you want to do it i could i think i was going to go fly to indiana to see i think tim stark has a a court case on the 4th of November, which is have in they, a week. Have they or, extradited him yet? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, I... Lauren I said it was like I, November the 5th or something. That he, they have to November 5th actually. I, I think it's November 4th, the day after election day. I think it's November 4th in Indianapolis. So he's got to he's got to be there. Um, You know, I, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't I don't think we're going to be able to film in court or anything, but I thought I would just go check it out like I did that, you know. Listen, I, I went to Oklahoma that time, and I'm not using any of that shit of, of Tim Stark, you know, but I went I'm just sort of following it. But You know who you know, they're after now? Who? Daniel Chambers. I've, oh, had, I've right? had the Attorney General of Indiana contact me wanting information about Daniel Chambers and and animals that he took from GW and yeah oh, that's it. that makes sense okay that makes yeah. sense I'm not surprised mm -hmm. um yeah Daniel Chambers lives where Ohio, that's in Ohio no the, uh, I'm sorry Ohio it wasn't it was yeah. it's Ohio yeah he lives in Ohio yeah um no that makes sense that and you know that's you know surprised. that's where Tim's monkeys are and everything He's, he's That's like, what I was going to say. That makes sense that they would probably be there. That makes sense. Listen, Tim fucked up. He th he thought that he could, you know, that Tim Tim only listens to Tim, you yep, know that. Yeah. And and so the you know I even told Tim because he called me a few times. I said, Tim, like, what do you think is going to be the outcome, man? What are you doing? Like, you really think you're going to go just like you know be on the run? endlessly without a plan like i was like tim you're just making it worse for yourself like, right you're you're broke yeah. Your, yeah. dude like like just fucking you know like he just fucked it up and and you know the problem is i think if tim doesn't tell them where those animals are you know some of those spider monkeys and i think he you know he moved the toucans you know he moved the expensive smaller right. stuff awesome. right he moved, yeah. you know whatever if, if he doesn't start telling them that he's gonna just sit in jail like it's he's just fucked himself it's yeah. really it's you know anyway no I, I i would believe what you just said but listen i'm not like again with tim i'm not trying to fuck tim over i'm not like you know the you don't need to you know, yeah. he did it himself yeah. you know yeah and i'm not like he's you know he's done enough to himself man he's his own worst enemy but anyway listen well when do you want to come um, to dallas well when's the best time for you guys i could either come before the fourth, which is basically early next week, or I could come. Uh, I'm just trying to think. Um, I could either come before the fourth or after the fourth. Like I could go to Dallas on the. I could fly into Dallas on the. Let me, see, let me just try to think of what would give me enough time. 
Yeah, like on the first or, or the see, second, third. Do we, have I anything, have to... do we have anything that would prohibit us? Let me check the weather because it's fucking nasty for the next two days. All right, well, listen, either I could do it before the fourth or after the fourth, right after. I mean, the sooner the better because, like I said, we're going to lock the church. Um, so probably, be, and, this, and just before it starts getting really cold, probably. Um, 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 yeah, it looks like the fourth will be nice weather, according to, you know. Well, no, I wouldn't be there the fourth. I'd, I'd have to be there because I have to be in Indianapolis on the fourth. So okay. I'd be there either the, either the first and the second and leave the third. So that would uh, be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, in, right? Yeah. Right. And, and it shows sunny and 66 every day. So. so So maybe I do that if that works for you guys. When? Um, the, either the first or the second. Yeah. Halloween, we have a big deal. We have to judge Halloween contests at some place in Dallas. That's what you ought to do is you ought to come and... What day? So it's the Halloween to the 31st, right? Yeah. What, do you, what, kind of, what are you judging for Halloween? What it's, is it? It's at, the, it's at the Rhino uh, Halloween costume. Oh. Oh, Halloween like costume the contest. The Spearmint Rhino? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds fun. And, that's then, the, and, that's then, the, and then guess who we met? We've been hanging out. Yeah. We've been hanging out with Pablo Escobar's grandson. Super nice guy down there. Yeah, yeah, really interesting. Really interesting guy. But yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Well, listen. Um, just you tell me, man. Just tell me when you want me to come. Maybe you know, text me tomorrow. How about the, or text him. All right, Lauren so says we'll text you. It'd probably be like the second because right. we'll probably be fucked up hanging over yeah. on the first. So. Okay. All Are right, you gonna so watch? Um, good. you're gonna watch the. Ghost Adventures Thursday night. Is that this coming Thursday? Yes, yeah. yeah, this Thursday. Yeah, Thursday night. Oh, okay. Two hours. Uh, okay, I'm glad you told me that. Dude, it's ghost. it's it, there's some pretty fucked up stuff when you when you watch it. I'm telling <laughs> you, it's, it's pretty crazy. But yeah. All right, man. All right, all right you guys. Well, listen, uh, Lauren, thanks. Jeff, thanks. Um, all right, I'll talk to you soon. Sorry, I missed you the other day. I missed you by like ten minutes. Yeah, that's, that's like, all right. I just. We have to drive up this hill to get signal, and I just, right. all right, he must be busy, uh, and I, all right. No, I was on another call, and then I realized, fuck, I just fucking fucked up, so sorry about that. That's all right. All right, man, I'll, text me when you want me to come, okay? All right. All right. All right, bye. 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 bye.